Hello Info person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing some of the new discoveries in regards to brown dwarfs. With this particular discovery coming from new observations from the James Webb Space Telescope, with the main focus being the discovery of brown dwarfs we've never actually seen before. And specifically, the type of a brown dwarf that's very very different from everything else we've seen so far, but that in theory could actually be some of the most common and also most exciting objects somewhere out there in the entire galaxy. But because these particular brown dwarfs are practically invisible in the optical light, we can only actually see them in the infrared, which is why the James Webb Space Telescope is perfect for these observations and why it was able to discover this new unusual object. But before we talk about the actual discovery, let me try to explain why this is kind of exciting. So generally, when it comes to various types of stars and various star-like objects, based on the surface temperature, we classify them using different types of letters. This is known as the Harvard Spectral Classification. Now the hottest stars, or the hottest objects, are O-type stars. These are usually very very hot, produce extremely bright blue light, and can actually be up to 100,000 times as bright as our sun. These are also some of the brightest stars visible to us, and you can usually find them relatively easy with a relatively cheap telescope. But as you go down the temperature, the stars change in brightness and also change in color. We have B and A type, which are still pretty bright and still relatively easily visible, and also stars relatively common in the entire galaxy. Then we have F, G and K type, which are very similar in mass to our own sun, and are thus extremely interesting for a lot of astronomers trying to find Earth-like planets. And lastly we have the M type, the most common type of a star in the entire galaxy. The stars we often refer to as the red dwarfs. And technically this is the lowest you can get with so-called main sequence stars, or basically objects that contain some kind of a hydrogen fusion. But technically you can have an object that's even less massive and thus even cooler, with letters generally being extended into L, T and Y. And these are generally known as the brown dwarfs. The L type were confirmed to exist just over a decade ago, and as of today, nearly 2000 have already been confirmed, mostly because of various observations in the infrared light. These are objects that don't have hydrogen fusion, but they will often have deuterium fusion and also sometimes lithium fusion, giving them a temperature that's still relatively hot. Then we have much cooler T dwarfs, some of which have only been discovered a few years ago, objects that are even more difficult to detect, but are still visible and still produce a little bit of light. And the temperature for these objects is usually between about 300 degrees and 1000 degrees Celsius. So I guess in some sense, sort of similar to the temperature on the surface of Venus. But then for a very long time, the scientists have also speculated that there are probably so-called white dwarfs. And these objects are generally referred to as the ultra-cool dwarfs, mostly because of their temperature, not because they're awesome. The temperature here would be much lower than 230 degrees Celsius, and unlike other brown dwarfs, like this one right here, which are still kind of visible in the optical light, a typical white dwarf would produce no optical observations whatsoever. It would practically be black, and only visible with very certain observations in radio frequencies and of course in certain infrared frequencies. Which is exactly why when the James Webb became operational, this was one of its primary missions. Try to discover as many unusual brown dwarfs in the vicinity of planet Earth as potentially possible. And one of the main reasons why the scientists are so curious in these objects is because it helps us understand the potential formation mechanism for various star-like and planetary objects. These types of objects are basically somewhere on the border between being a planet and being a brown dwarf. And so trying to figure out how they form can actually help us figure out how everything else formed even right here in the solar system. But the other property that's super intriguing about these types of brown dwarfs is of course their temperature. Quite a few of them possess temperatures not so different from what you're experiencing right now on planet Earth. The ones discovered so far all have temperatures less than 200 degrees Celsius, with the coolest brown dwarf discovered so far that you can kind of see right here having temperatures similar to what we have in Antarctica, minus 40 degrees Celsius. But because this object is so dim, it was really only discovered back in 2014, despite being one of the closest objects to the solar system. With one of these white type dwarfs literally being one of the dimmest if not the dimmest objects ever discovered. It's orbiting around a white dwarf that you see right here, but it's almost impossible to see it in this image, even though it is there. The surface temperature on this brown dwarf is somewhere between 52 and 77 degrees Celsius. But even though approximately 2000 different brown dwarfs have been already confirmed, only a handful have been confirmed to be Y-type. 
Not because they don't exist, but because they're so difficult to see. Even though the current estimate suggests that there should be billions of these objects out there in the Milky Way. As a matter of fact, these are probably some of the most common objects in the entire galaxy, with at least 20 billion brown dwarfs potentially being white type. And all other types representing approximately 100 billion brown dwarfs hiding somewhere in the entire galaxy. And a lot of them also being very different from one another. For example, some of the most dense objects out there, apart from of course white dwarfs and neutron stars, are also brown dwarfs. For example, an object known as Toy 569b is believed to be at least 40 times as dense as planet Earth. So these are very unusual, very strange objects that we barely understand at all. Especially because none of them exist in the solar system. But one of the most unique features for the white type dwarfs is the fact that they also have molecules in their atmosphere. Essentially because the temperature here is much lower than other types of objects, a lot of molecules can still exist, interact, and obviously produce a lot of intriguing chemical reactions. Which is actually one of the reasons why so many scientists want to study these even in more detail for potential signs of maybe some kind of atmospheric life. But that's of course something we cannot do just yet. Nevertheless, it's believed that these objects will usually contain methane, carbon dioxide, water in all sorts of forms, and even ammonia, all basically circulating in the atmosphere, very similar to how gases circulate in, for example, Jupiter. But because in this case we're talking about conditions very, very similar to what we have on planet Earth, and of course elements that we usually associate with life as well, you can kind of imagine that these objects will be super, super intriguing for anyone trying to figure out how life can start on other planets. But like I said, the first such object was only confirmed a few years ago. Up until that point, these objects were believed to be very theoretical, and nobody knew if they even existed. And approximately a decade ago, one of these objects, located about 32 light years away from us, was discovered to have a temperature of about 460 Kelvin, or about 180 Celsius. So definitely above the comfortable temperature where liquid water can exist. However, this also made this object a little bit easier to detect. It was basically a little bit hotter. And so the scientists using James Webb Space Telescope wanted to see what else they can find here. And so when looking at this particular object in different frequencies, they discovered that it seems to have a partner, another Y-type dwarf, but this time smaller and cooler. An object approximately 11.5 Jupiter masses with a surface temperature of 325 Kelvin or about 52 Celsius. Implying, of course, that this is an extremely exciting and really important for astronomy brown dwarf binary. But in this case, the first ever white type brown dwarf binary with the orbital separation of one astronomical unit and a period of about seven years. And as you can see from this image, there's really only a handful of these objects known to us. All of them very exciting. And one of the most exciting objects discovered in the last few years is of course Loman 16. One of the closest objects to the solar system, at the closest brown dwarf system, and essentially the first ever brown dwarf binary to be confirmed in the last decade or so. This object is exciting for different reasons, and some of the videos in the description explain this a little bit better. But in this case, unlike other brown dwarfs, this particular binary would be practically invisible in optical light, but visible to the James Webb and other infrared telescopes because they basically produce very similar light to planet Earth. And unlike planets like Jupiter or other gas giants, which will usually have layers on the inside, a white type dwarf is believed to have no such layers and actually is believed to be fully convective, with all of the layers mixing at all times, and all of those chemicals I mentioned, such as methane, ammonia, water, and carbon dioxide, having a lot of opportunities to mix on the inside for millions and even billions of years. In this case, possibly at least a billion years, because the current estimate for the age of this system is 1 to maybe 3 billion years old, with both objects also representing a really exciting and very unusual binary system that we've never seen before. Two objects, potentially anywhere from 12 to maybe 18 masses of Jupiter, orbiting around one another at the same distance as Earth is from the Sun. But this was just one of approximately 20 different observations of different white dwarfs investigated by the James Webb, so there might be more discoveries in the next few weeks. If there are some really exciting discoveries, we'll definitely talk about this on the channel, so make sure to subscribe. But at the moment what the scientists want to figure out, if this is actually some kind of a peculiar unusual system, or if this is something extremely common. Because we know that when it comes to stars, approximately half of all of the stars, or even more than half, are binary systems. And so if the scientists discover that something similar is happening with the brown dwarfs, it can help the scientists explain how various types of brown dwarfs actually form. If they form like typical stars, 
the overall ratio of binaries to non-binaries should be kind of similar. But there's also a chance that they might have their own formation history and might be entirely different objects altogether. So it's definitely something that the scientists want to figure out, especially because when it comes to astronomy, these are literally some of the most brand new objects discovered to date. As a matter of fact, the first ever brown dwarf discovered was only in 1995. And so even today, these objects are still poorly understood and we don't really know much about them. And especially the Y-type brown dwarfs, which seem to have even more unusual properties compared to other brown dwarfs. But we'll of course talk more about this once the scientists find something else or once more observations are made from this particular system. As always, you can find the paper in the description below. On that note, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.